So I didn't participate in the coaching, but we do have other programs in place in order to support the diversity and equity of learning for all of our staff members. Um, and we do that at regular intervals um, as teens. Uh, I think that it has been particularly helpful for me because it has helped me to identify, um, to make, it's helped me to really drive towards results. And we know that what we uh, measure is what we do. And we've been really intentional about setting program goals that are related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And that has really made a difference for us on the individual level, as individual staff members, on the team level, and as an organization to drive towards those key results that we talked about before. Coaching, not only for our members, but for our staff, is an element, but not the only part of the diversity, equity, and learning experience that we have. Um, Lorraine is going to talk more about this, but uh, we uh, have um, uh, what we call DEI fundamentals training as part of our onboarding process for all of our staff within their first three to six months. That is the first time we develop a common language so that we are actually working in the same framework. Uh, throughout the course of the year, there are multiple working groups or community groups that work uh, uh, on a variety of issues but where DEI comes in. So for example, we have a management community of practice in the course of regular talent uh, conversations about hiring, about performance management, about how to build inclusive culture. Um, we, those things get infused. It's not that we are doing DEI training. We're talking about management and what does it look like. Um, and so those are the community practices. Mm -hmm. Actually, is it you, Allison, who run similarly a program community, uh, a member-facing yeah. program community of practice? Yeah, so we have a, a, a community of practice for folks who are facilitators for programs. So we are intentional in those uh, community meetings to identify ways to make sure that we're creating inclusive spaces there. We also have a community of practice for folks who are serving as career coaches and leadership development coaches as well. And, uh, in the same way, they identify how can they make sure that they're examining their own bias and not bringing it to their coaching work. Yeah. But then you specifically asked about coaching. So if you think about my own development that I have, I myself have gone through all these different spaces mm -hmm. as a staff person. Then the additional thing that I've got was an executive coach, um, which uh, I think it was about eight sessions over the uh, course of a year, about an hour each. And I would say uh, probably it wasn't the first time I was doing this, <laughs> um, but it was probably around the fourth or fifth time session that I started to unpack and start to practice. Uh, and I still uh, create accountability partners within my own team. And I said, this is what I'm working on. Is this showing up? And in fact, um, we just did through our performance reviews uh, just recently. And last year, I had promised to a staff member of mine, I said, I need to make sure that I am building your leadership. I am you know, uh, creating more spaces for you to show up and lead. And this year, without being prompted, she, she had said that I was actually able to do that, which was surprising to me because I didn't even realize that it had become a habit. But it took a while, I'm going to say. Mm -hmm.